Hi guys, it's Christine Bertram coming to you live from the hive here on a Thursday night. No, it's Wednesday night. Oh my gosh, you guys, I almost forgot. It's Wednesday. <laughs> this is really weird to be live on a Wednesday night. It doesn't normally happen because normally my Wednesday nights are dedicated for in-person classes. I think I would have to say out of 52, oops, my volume needs to go down. Out of 52 weeks out of the year, I bet that hmm, probably 48 of them are actually um, in-person classes on Wednesdays. So I am live. Yay, I found it. Okay. Hi, Deb Norman. Hi, Penny Powell. And there are others watching as well. <laughs> That's awesome. So it was really weird <laughs> to have it in my head. I kept forgetting that there was a live tonight and finally it dawned on me at like three o'clock. I'm like, oh yeah, I got a live tonight. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie Kelly. Hi, Lena Beck uh, from British Columbia. Woohoo! cheers. Hi, Linda Hodge. Merry Christmas to you too. Hi, Cindy Runtree and Anna Rabadou. Yeah, it was, it's weird. <laughs> like, I'm like, what do I have tonight? And it's like, oh yeah, there's class tonight. It's my last live class of the year. Um, hi, Carissa Alberts. Hi, Randy Schultz. I got your Christmas card today, Randy. Hi, Kathy King. Woohoo. So you guys, the, the Christmas cards, holiday cards have been rolling in. And hi, Alice from Indiana. I'm going to be doing a special Facebook Live to go over the rest of the Christmas cards I've been getting. Hi, Karen Westein. Hi, Diana. Um, watching from Costco, <laughs> waiting for your pumpkin pie. I love it. <laughs> uh, they make good pumpkin pie. They also make good pecan pie. Um, I heard that it's not pecan pie because you don't pee in a can or something along the lines my dad said. You don't call it pecan because that's it, it's a pecan. <laughs> it's pecan. <laughs> so I love my pecan pie. <laughs> Hi, Judy Emil. Oh, you got your card, Kathy. I'm so happy to hear that. Hi, Mary Carls. Woohoo. Hi, Chris Dudarenki. Hi, Carla Lake. So, um, what's happening? Yeah, it's the Expressions in Ink, Ink, Paper, Scissors class tonight. Um, hi, Denise. Hi, Kat. Woo, you made it, Kat. That's awesome. Hi, Kate Weir. Hi, Ann Bellinger. So, we're going to be doing the Expressions in Ink, Ink, Paper, Scissors here momentarily, but I do have some things, I think, as I, I have them, I'll pop them in my head. <laughs> So, you guys, after I did the Winter Creative Escape Showcase last week, I think I did it on Friday, uh, I had like 11 people sign up or 10 people sign up. There were quite a few, and I still, when I did all the math and figured it all out, I have three open spots left, okay? Hi, Arliss. Um, so, if you're interested in joining me for a demonstrator-only or discount-only event with me that I'm hosting using a lot of all new product out of the new Spring Mini catalog, um, let me know. I have three spots left. Uh, Saturday in person is full, but I have space on Thursday, Friday, or Sunday, or online. But once I get my three, I'm going to be done. Mom says you got to cap it, <laughs> so I have to listen to her. Otherwise, I, she won't be happy. <laughs> oh, so Randy got my card. Awesome. That's so exciting. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Feline um, from Eastern Oregon. Woohoo! So, um... So Winter Creative Escape, you guys, it's December yet. So there's a couple little things going on. We had a bingo. So Kelly made a bingo board for me. And you guys, I've been watching them come through. Uh, you can wait till the end or if you think you get it, just post a picture in the comments. If you're having a hard time finding it, I have a post that's tagged to the top of my cards by Christine Page. Um, Mom has a good idea. Yes. <laughs> she, <laughs> I think we're going to do cookies again. Do you guys that participated for the Summer Creative Escape, did you like my mom's chocolate chip cookies? Because I think that you guys did, and you may want the cookies for an afternoon snack again or in your to-go box. So, um, hi, Patricia Mater. Woohoo. And there's Alice, thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. So if you guys want the chocolate chip cookies, the homemade with putting in the recipe cookies, you got to let me know. Give me some thumbs ups or give me, I did it so low you guys can't even see it. <laughs> give me some hearts because I have your morning like treatsy figured out and I have your attendants make like the, the handmade gift that's in the works. But I was trying to figure out something for the afternoon snack. And if you guys want the cookies, we'll do the cookies again. My mom can whip those cookies up like that, like lickety split. <laughs> so, so it's looking like we might be doing some cookies again. Okay, cool. So I thought, well, that's good. Cause then I get cookies and then Tyler gets cookies and then we're all happy because everybody gets cookies. <laughs> so I'm Mary. <laughs> yeah. 
yes to chocolate chip cookies. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so then I have all that kind of stuff figured out the final, um, figurings out of all that good stuff. So, okay. So back to the bingo board. <laughs> um, there is a post it's in the challenges. Um, like I have a post that's taken to the top of my news feed or the cards by Christine news feed. It has all the different challenges, all concise in one post. Hi, Cheryl Thomas. Hi, Holly. Um, and so in that post is the monthly creative challenge, like link. It's the class card challenge link, the bingo board link, and also the sharing of my page that I'm doing the drawing for the half off mini embossing machine, mini um, stamp and cut emboss machine. So there's four different things that are going on. That post contains all the links and what you do have to just click on each of those links and it'll take you to the original post. So you don't share your bingo board there. You don't share your cards in that post, but within that post, it has all the links. So, so all those things are happening. Hi, Donna. Um, also, the scavenger hunt is available. Oh, I should probably link that in there as well. So the scavenger hunt can be found on my Cards by Chris B website under the newsletter section. I should put a link for that in there as well. So hi, Joyce. Hi, Lynn Beasley. I'm going to make myself a note um, to do that. So um, because if you guys don't know where it is and it's hard to find, then you might not get to it and find it. So I'll make a note to add the scavenger hunt link to that challenges post. So if you guys, that's always the first post that's at the top of my website. Okay, scavenger hunt though, that goes through January 31st. And so I have like maybe 19 or 20 different questions. It gets you out to um, navigate through the catalog. I don't ever intend it to be stressful or like do un have undue hardship on your mental health or your stability. I, <laughs> if that's happening, just stop. <laughs> what it's meant to do is help you see things in the catalog that you may not have seen if I didn't do the scavenger hunt. I never want you to cry or um, swear at me because of it. <laughs> it's meant for you to just have a little fun and find things in the catalog that you might not have seen. If it's causing you like too much time and you don't have time for it, then just don't do it. It's okay. You don't have to do it. <laughs> Hi, Sandy Wicklinder. Hi, Tabitha Lawson. Woohoo! Okay, so the scavenger hunt, winter creative escape, the challenges, you guys. What's going to happen is that there's one week left and then it's going to be January and we're all going to be busy with hopefully our festivities and gathering with friends and family over the next few days. I've got off tomorrow and I'm off on Friday. Woohoo! And so tomorrow is going to be a stamping and prepping day and designing day. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday start the no holds barred of family gatherings <laughs> starting Friday <laughs> and going until Sunday night and then back to it on Monday night uh, are lots of I think involvements of food and people. <laughs> so, oh, it's hard to believe it's going to be 2022, you guys. Yes. Um, Chris got her done at work today. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> we won't tell anybody. Okay, perfect. Um, I don't know. Does anybody else have anything? Oh, classes. So, um, I... I will be showing you guys the first class of the year. It's the catalog launch party and celebration um, card class. The first 36 people who sign up for attending class um, will get the little goodie that, a little treatsy that um, my Aunt Karen's gonna be helping me make those. So I have the first 36. We're planning for, to, I'm, I'm giving her 36, enough stuff to make 36 of these things. <laughs> and so the first 36 people to uh, sign up for class will be getting those gifts. And I, after I did the, tip Tuesday last night, I had a, a few of you sign up. So that's awesome. I'm over four people now, which I'm like, oh man, I got to get people signed up for class. I haven't even made the cards. And finally I got them made this week. Kelly just made the cover photo uh, for me today or last night. And so I'll be publishing that class officially. Whew, you -hoo. Okay, Merry Christmas to you, Kathy Jackson. Hi, Brenda Little. So, okay. You guys, Technique Thursday. Kelly did it already, so you will be able to watch for that tomorrow, I promise. <laughs> did you guys see what she did last week? So we were doing the live on Thursday, and everybody mentioned that there was no Technique Thursday, and so I reached out to her, and also Anna reached out to her, and she said all day she felt like Thursday was Wednesday, and the following day was going to be 
Friday. So she felt all day was Wednesday and the following day was Thursday when in fact it was Thursday. And so she had it in her head she was going to come Friday, which she thought was Thursday. So hi, Adam Glazer. Woohoo. Merry Christmas to you too. Um, ended up working from home today, Adam. I think you probably figured that out when I wasn't there at 910. <laughs> so I got my teeth cleaned today. You guys, I had a dentist appointment at one and so they feel nice and smooth and all good. <laughs> I love getting the teeth cleaned. Um, so Kathy Groves just asked, what is the class for the first 36? So whenever I do a launch party, three times a year, Stampin' Up! introduces a new catalog. And whenever I do the introducing of the new catalog, I do a card class in conjunction with the launch party. And at that launch party is when I give a little gift. Uh, so usually there's a treat box that's new in the spring. And so I take the treat box and decorate it up and include some kind of chocolate or candy in it. And so for every launch party, I generally give that little gift when people sign up for class. And so I'm going to only be making 36 because I had to scrounge, beg, borrow, and steal to get these sweet little boxes <laughs> to have enough of them between the winter creative escape and also the um, um, the launch party. So I'm making 36. When they're gone, they're gone. <laughs> That's all I can say. Hi, Deanne. Woohoo. There's Penny Powell. Um, eating a Twix and thinking of you. Yes, I love my Twix. I love my Reese's and I love my Kit Kats. <laughs> but I think if I had to pick, you're right. It would be Twix. <laughs> Hi, Carol Jefferson. Hello, hello. So, okay. I don't know if I have any more updates, but if you guys can watch for Technique Thursday tomorrow, I'm going to do a little sneaker peeker of the card because generally I always do this, this, I show it to you at the class on Thursday night, but since I'm not having class tomorrow night, that's tonight, I'm going to show you the card when I flip the camera down, and then tomorrow night, I'm formulating in my head which class I'm going to do as a replay for you tomorrow night. I will schedule it to um, do a little post at six o'clock that says, sorry guys, I'm not going to be live tonight, but here's an awesome video in case you missed it from a blast from the past. So, um, is the launch party online? Yes. Yes, it is. Hi, Elaine Rebeck. Um, the launch party is in person Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So that I believe that is the fifth, the seventh, and the eighth. And then that Thursday, January 6th is my online class. So, uh, January 6th will be the Facebook live class. Hi, Luann Johnson. And so, for you guys to attend any of my Facebook Live classes is always free. Like, I don't charge anything. I give you guys a, the class that's part of it. Um, but if anybody ever wants to make cards with me or get my kits, that's where there is a cost involved with it. And you can always find that information on any of my events that I publish on Facebook or on my Cards by Christine website. It's cardsbychrispy.com. Hi, Sue Thomas. Oh, yes. And thanks for everybody for sharing the video. I truly, genuinely appreciate that. I, I've had so many people comment to me that they found me by somebody sharing my video or a post of my Cards by Christine, like a video that I've done. And they were so happy that the person shared it to it with them. So don't ever think that you're being a bother or a pass by sharing videos with other people unless you do it a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if you do it like 10 times a day, maybe people would be like, oh, God, again. But Generally, the feedback that I get from people when you share my videos is that people are appreciative that they were shown my videos. So, so thank you for sharing me with your friends and family, guys. I really appreciate it. So, all right. Are you guys ready to stamp? Okay. I'm going to have you guys help me remember to do something. So I went to do the drawing for the Mary Snowflakes class. That was a couple weeks ago. And I cannot find the video in my website, like in the Facebook um, page. And so I couldn't pull it up. So I don't, I have to do a little investigating. I didn't figure that out until recently. Um, and so I don't have the names picked for the Mary Snowflakes cards, but I am going to do a random number generator drawing for, there are um, 33 people who re um, registered and paid for the class tonight. So I'm going to do a door prize. Um, USPS got one of them. So they are number 34. So that means I have six kits left or uh, I have six uh, sets of cards left for class tonight. So um, hi, Sarah New. So Deb Norman just asked what the cost is for the launch party. Um, I have to get a sheet and I can look it up. Hang on one second. My pricing changed in going into the new year, you guys. I did increase the cost of my classes slightly. Um, with costs going crazy around the world with shortages and supply chain issues and 
the amount of time it takes to prep the cards and the, you know, it just, it, it adds. And I haven't increased my prices of my card classes for probably three years. And so um, I don't have everything kind of like baked into my head for the cost. So Deb Norman asks, hi, Angie Liner. Deb Norman asks what the cost is. And if anybody's ever wondering like what the costs are for my classes, I do have a sheet that looks like this, and I know you guys can't read this. It is way too small, but just know that this is available on my website, cardsbycrispy.com. If you go to my newsletter section, it's there. And so this is, I have everything broken down by like monthly classes, my sweet bundle classes, and then this launch party is actually an extra class in January. And so I've got that as, there's four cards, it's $18 or uh, free with a $30 order in person. For mailing, it's $5 to mail them. So that makes it $23 or free with a $45 order. So the, the, that's what I've got ingrained in my head, you guys. I'm like, it changed a little bit. So so in general, there's an in-person cost versus a mailing cost. And the reason that they're different is because it costs money for me to mail the kits. Whereas if you come to class, I don't have to ship anything. And so um, there's also a porch pick, sorry, I had a nose itch. Um, I, um, there's also a porch pickup option. So like, let's say you're local and you can't make it and you want the card kits, I'd set them on the counter and you could pick them up. So the cost um, is in-person, 18 or free with a $30 order at class or for mailing, it's 23 because it's $5 for the mailing and then or a $45 order. And basically what happens is if you place an order and use my host code, you're buying product, right? So you probably would have bought product anyways. Um, anything that you want. Hi, Hilda now. Um, it, I don't tell you what to buy. You guys can go off your shopping carts and or your shopping lists and buy anything you want. And then as long as you use the host code, then I mail you the card kits for free. And so then you can get your order comes directly from Stampin' Up and then the card kits come from me. So this file is out there. Um, perfect, Deb, sounds good. So this file is out there. Um, you can print off a version of it. Um, I am still going to be working on publishing the year file that I have. Uh, and then also... Oh, Sandy Wicklander, every time I think of you, <laughs> I think if I got to get my little formula together of what I'm doing for my the year's worth, because I have some people that want to do a year's worth of classes and get that all figured out. So, okay. Um, yes, it can be paid through PayPal. The only thing is I do not send invoices in PayPal. You guys, I'm a busy, busy lady. <laughs> and um, I ask that if you're going to take advantage of the cash discount option, you send it via PayPal friends and family. Um, hi, Jean Terwilliger from Pennsylvania. Um, I have a website and all of my classes can be paid for via my website. But what happens when you pay for it via my website, you're charged a credit card processing fee. So I try to save you that convenience fee um, by if you want to pay me with a cash option. Um, so you can send it via PayPal friends and family, Venmo, Facebook pay, cash app, a check or cash works perfectly good too. And that saves you the money of not using a credit card. So it, I try to pass that on to you. So if you do want to pay, hi, Judy Bobo. If you do want to pay with a cash option, you just have to make sure you choose friends and family. Um, before you check out and not good or service, um, that's up to you. If you want to choose good or service, but then you have to pay the amount that charges the the higher amount that includes the fee so that I am not out the fee part. So hope that makes sense. Okay. So thanks for sharing, Mary. I appreciate it. I'm just looking through your comments real quick. And if you guys ever have any problems or issues or need help with anything, I help. <laughs> I'm here to help. <laughs> so, okay. Let's move the camera down. Are you guys ready to make some beautiful cards? Oh, I know that as the night rolls on, I think that a couple of you are going to want this set of um, the set of cards and the goodie bag that goes with it. So it is a great set. I was trying to think of what can be used for this December class because we're at the end of the holiday mini catalog and I didn't want to risk anything being out. Uh, that happened to me with the Merry Snowflakes. <laughs> the, the bundle was gone by the time I had my in-person class, but fortunately people didn't have to uh, buy that as part of their class fee or I didn't need anything special. So for this though, I switched over to the annual catalog. So I'm going to flip the camera down. I'm going to show you what the suite is all about. And also one of the extra little dies that was used, which I don't know where I put mine. <laughs> so I'm going to show it to you in the catalog. <laughs> so, um, all right, I'll flip down you guys. Let's get ready here. 
Okay, so what I picked for this one is Expressions in Ink uh, for this one, for this ink, paper, scissors. The bundle is on page 96. And so this is the annual catalog here that I'm looking at. And 96 is this Expressions in Ink bundle. Um, sweet, actually. And it includes designer series paper, an ephemera pack, <laughs> a stamp set, and dies. And so um, included in your goodie bag is the this ephemera pack. And then also the roll of ribbon, the gold shimmer ribbon, which is really, really, really pretty. So um, I am switching up ink, paper, scissors starting in January to include designer series paper, a quarter pack of it. So that's why the price changed slightly going into the new year. Um, it'll give you guys the ability to pick different patterns of paper if you're not so excited about what I picked. So it gives you more options and it also gives you a little bit extra so that you can make more cards if you wanted. So the other thing that is primarily used in this whole, all four cards is this die set called Picture This. And Carissa twisted my arm. <laughs> I didn't even own this set. She let me borrow hers um, to, to use the die cutting here. It's called Picture This, page 164. It is the meat and potatoes of all four of the cards, is what I guess you would say. Uh, because one of the cards features this outline die, and the other three cards then use the labels that come from the inside. So nothing gets wasted when you use this die set. It's so awesome. Um, it actually, she encouraged me or like inspired me to buy this when it went on sale during the seasonal sale back in November. So I got mine. Now I just don't know where I put it. <laughs> I think it's upstairs hiding somewhere. Hi, Mitzi Stanley. Okay, so in everybody that got the class, so the 33 of you, you got a goodie bag. And hi, Jody Storman. In your goodie bag was a piece of a quarter sheet of basic white. So that basic white is in the goodie bag because it is used for um, this card for the flo flower and foliage leaves and it's used for the flowers and the leaves here, okay? So, um, yeah, Deb, <laughs> I almost didn't get it during the sale, but then I ended up doing it. So, hi, Margaret Rika. Um, in your goodie bag, then, is this ephemera pack, and it also includes your sequins, which is very cool because you'll use the sequins. Um, there is a lot in here. There is so much that you're going to have leftovers to make more pretty cards with it. And then you also have here your gold shimmer ribbon. Okay, so that's what's included in here. And then you will have, so I'm gonna stick this back in because this is going to get mailed out to somebody. I know it will. Okay, so then you'll have your four card kits. And inside of the card kits are all the other papers that you'll need. Um, all the ribbon comes from this roll of ribbon, so you guys will be able to cut what you need. But you'll have four card kits. And we're gonna actually start with so i'm going to stick this in here because somebody is bound and determined to get that okay so we're gonna so i have started my ephemera pack here so we're gonna start with the pale papaya and pear pizzazz card okay and i want to start with this one because it is the base for that die and so i want to show you like that's where the outlines came from and then this is one of the labels that's the middle label. And then this one is the label there. So that's super cool. So we got to use all the labels. And so we're going to start with Pale Papaya and the Pear Pizzazz one. So why don't you guys that are making the card with me grab that. You guys, the PDF tutorial was sent out to you last Friday night, Saturday morning early. Hi, Lisa Holstrom. Okay, so these are the, this is the stamp set and the dies that were used to make these cards. Um, I think Chris and I made these together a long time ago, it seems already, back sometime in November. Um, I looked at this, and you guys, I actually, every single stamp is used, is used between all four of the cards. And that is generally the mission when I am doing like a featured stamp set for a class. And then on top of it, these are the dies. And so this die got used, this big leaf die got used, and then almost everything got used maybe except for that one. So definitely got the money's worth out of this. Now, if you're worried that you don't have the stamp set, but you really like this cards, I think that there's a lot of options if you have flowers at home. Because if you have flowers at home, you can make almost anything work. If you have flowers and sentiments. And so as we're going through the cards, you'll see that if you have flowers and sentiments at home, you could 
pretty much make these cards look very similar to me. Okay, so let's get this out of the plastic and show you guys what it looks like out of the plastic. Okay, so you've got the pear pizzazz with pale papaya. So pretty together. Um, so I'm going to get all my bits and parts out here. So I did pull out my pieces from the ephemera pack already so that I had them out. And you guys, there's a bunch of stuff in here. So you guys won't have that. And I don't know why I have so many leaves, but I do. Um, so let's see what's in your kit. You guys should have this little piece of vellum. Okay, the little piece of vellum, it's really hard to see it, but it's actually where the Helvo gets gold embossed on. Okay, so you should have this little piece of vellum. Make sure you have it. Um, <laughs> Linda said she lost the entire die set. That's not good. Um, say a prayer to St. Anthony. <laughs> That's what my mom would say. Okay, then you guys have two pieces of designer paper. They are just big enough to fit in the windows, okay? And so these are the same designer paper. You can see that front and back. It's just that two of them are cut with the flowers to go up and one is cut with the green. Now, if you would rather do them like this because you love green a lot, you could do that. You guys, it's always your card. You can switch it up, but you should have three pieces of designer paper. And then you'll have this piece of white, which is 30 and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenths. And then that die just went right over the top and it cut all those at the same time. Okay, then it has, there's a mat, a pale papaya mat, which is five and a quarter by four. And then you have your inside white mat, which is the same size. And then your pear pizzazz is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and just take your bone folder and burnish it. So you guys, we talked about that in your goodie bag, you have a piece of white. And it is about a quarter sheet like this. So we definitely are gonna be able to fit everything. And I wanna show you how that works because you can't go stamping your stuff right in the middle, okay? <laughs> That's not gonna work so good. So just know uh, one of the other cards here, we have two flowers and a leaf set. Okay, so I want to show you, you have to make sure when we're, you're doing your stamping, you stamp like this guy here, stamp this guy here, and then you're going to have this guy like here. So he's the flower here. And then we're going to fit a leaf in here. And then there's this. So there is plenty of room for you guys to fit everything on this white piece of paper. And I wanted to, to kind of game plan this with you. So like this one will go here, this one will go here. If you do this guy like in the bottom corner, you got plenty of room. And then we need two of these leaves. So <clears throat> just want you to show, just so you know, like don't go stamping your, your flower there <laughs> or like there. You need this white piece and you need to be strategic how you stamp so that you have room for everything. And I kind of wanted to start with this card first, but I want to save this one for last, you guys. I love it so much. Okay, so what do we need here? We need the pale papaya ink, which is one of the ink colors. And we are going to stamp our flower. Hi, Andy Qu Aquisto. Merry Christmas to you too. Hi, Patricia Settle. Okay, so we've got that. And we're gonna stamp that at the bottom. Boom, like that. Now, let's look at our inside really quick. Our inside also has that flower. So as long as we have that open, let's go ahead and stamp our inside and get that done. Okay. And it's kind of near the bottom right hand. That's where I like to put that, like the focal image in the inside. Okay. Then we're going to use the pear pizzazz. And what I'm going to do is my inside first. Because if you look at my inside, I did not put ink near the edge here so that it would kind of tuck in nicely. So when I ink up my leaf, I'm not going to put ink all the way to that tip. So I'm gonna kind of guess that it, it I kind of guessed where it was. Oop, gotta go this way. So I'm gonna put a little more ink and then this one's gonna go like that. And then I'm only inking up again, part of it. And then this guy's gonna sneak out on this side. Oop, I'm gonna go a little bit closer. Okay, so I didn't quite go all the way to there, but that's okay. Um, if you guys have a blender pen, 
a blender pen would actually work really nicely. So let's just put a little ink right on the corner of the block here. You can use a blender pen. And all you have to do is kind of just brush that. All you have to do is kind of brush it into it and now it kind of met the flower and that works. So I thought about using a marker. A marker would have worked too, but a blender pen was a little bit softer. Okay, so there's our inside. And now we need to stamp two of these leaves, which will go in our little bouquet on the front here. So we can do one here and one here, okay? Now, for those of you at home, what you can do, if, you, <laughs> if you're not Linda Hodge, you can use your die set and there's a flower here and there's a leaf here and you could go die cut them. If you're Linda Hodge and you don't wanna take time <laughs> and find your die set before you wanna make these cards, you can take and fussy cut this out. That is okay, it's not the end of the world, Linda. Um, it, it just requires the use of your scissors, okay? So, but because of the magic of TV, you guys saw here, you saw that I have mine done already. And I don't know how I ended up with six of them, but I ended up with six. So I don't necessarily need those, but I do need these three. And I think I'm gonna use that one. Oh, that one looks really good. Hang on. Hi, Sherry Martin. Thanks for sharing. Okay, so we have our two leaves and now our flower. So that's cool. So that's perfect right there. Now, on you guys, you're gonna save the rest of this for the, the other card, okay? So I'm just gonna set it off to the side and not forget where I put it. And we're going to, let's do our embossing so that we can get assembly happy. So you've got that little piece of vellum right here. It's missing. It's sticking to something or it is like it tucked down somewhere. I bet if you give it a good night's like sleep, and say a little prayer, I bet it will show up. It's my, uh, you know, I've lost quite a few things in my day. And generally, they think oh, after it was all said and done, I've only lost like one thing permanently that after five years I've never found. But generally, I, I found stamps. They've been stuck underneath things. Um, you guys, this is a little chalk pillow. I use it with my... Someone may be missing their leaves. I have them all. No, nobody's missing their leaves, Mitzi, because I didn't do any prior stamping. Hi, Dar McCarthy. Um, I don't do any prior stamping in any of my classes. And so everybody for their kits, nobody got any die cut pieces either. I gave everybody in this, this class, it's a featured stamp set with dies. And so I give everybody this sheet of paper and it's up to everybody to do their stamping and then their die cutting or fussy cutting. So... Yep, so I don't think anybody's missing their leaves. I think what happened is I made extra of them. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So my chalk pillow helps with static electricity. And we need a Versamark pad. The Versamark pad is like a pigment pad. Um, it is sticky. And then what you do is you'll pour embossing powder. So I've got gold embossing powder. So this was on the, the product list. Um, if you guys don't have gold, you could get by with maybe silver or black like you could use gray you could use a different color but i i did recommend gold because all the ephemera pack pieces are gold ephemera you guys i have a hardest time as much as i want to say it correctly it never comes out right so you got to be very careful with this because it's hard to see when you stamp on here um and um you don't want to squish too hard because it might give you a halo so, and it's hard to practice with Versamark. So I'm gonna just take a, a shot and go with it. And I'm gonna try not to squish so hard that it leaves a little um, halo. So, you know, with the vellum, it's kind of hard to see it. It's frosty. And so I'm gonna just give it a second here while the ink hits the vellum. Okay. Hi, Barbarco. Okay, so. So it's very hard to see it, but the word hello oh, there it is the word hello is on there and what i do is i pour the gold embossing powder right on there and it'll stick i stamped that really good i'm proud of myself so you you pour the embossing powder on there and you see the hello now this is such a teeny tiny little piece i highly recommend a clothespin to hold that for you so that um so that you don't burn your phalanges okay so i've got my heat tool here I'm going to turn it on and you got to give it about 20 seconds or so 
for it to really get hot. It's like a toaster meets a blow dryer. And I'm going to try to set this here in the light so you guys, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but my favorite part of stamping <laughs> is watching this turn to like a, it just melts the little pieces of plastic pellets. And when it's all said and done, it turns shiny and glossy like that. And it's melted. Super cool. So that went really nice. So clothespin. I always keep it handy so that I don't burn myself. All right. So in your ephemera pack, <laughs> this is what, oh man, see all over the place. Okay. You're going to have lots of extra bits and parts, you guys. I promise you're going to be able to make lots of extra cards. There's so much stuff left over at the end, but in your pack, there are these sheets. Um, yeah, at, you guys, I started stamping 20 years ago because of embossing powder. <laughs> That's what got me hook, line, and sinkered. So in your ephemera pack, you've got these gold leaves, different shaped stuff. Like this one has three, this one has two. It's really what you want to use. So I pulled out a three one here, and then I pulled out the three that's attached to the little berry one. And then I also pulled out the extra double berry one. So that's all in your kit. And so these pieces what I would recommend is pulling out your sheets. So there's sheets in here that are kind of protected between tissue paper. So you're gonna need your little sequins, but you can see there's different sheets. And then there's, I think I have my pack and then Carissa gave me her pack. <laughs> so I've got lots of bits and parts here, you guys. All right, so you're gonna have to pull out the leaves that you want and you're more than welcome to use more than what I used. I just used what I thought would be good. Um, but maybe you want to, oh, that needs to get down there. Um, be careful. This is not the easiest thing to do. Um, I should have just left them in there, but I wanted to show you guys what's going on. <laughs> so get in there, little guy. Okay. So that's what this is all about. I didn't lose that. That's good. All right. So now you have your vellum that's embossed. You have your pink or your pale papaya, your two leaves. You've got some gold stuff going on. You've got your little embellishments you'll need. And so what we can do is start assembling. So how I, hi Julie Bierschbach. What I would do is the white piece is raised up with, I did foam strips actually. You could use dimensionals. Um, foam strips seemed easier to me than dimensionals um, because you've got a lot of straight lines. And so these are the foam adhesive strips that Stampin' Up! sells. And what I did, that you guys, there's really not a top or a bottom to this, but you might see like my, my cutter up in my house leaves little black residue from the bottom plate. So that to me would be the bottom. Um, it's hard to tell. This is actually then embossed with the Tasteful Textiles embossing folder. So what you can do is flip it over and we're going to cut strips. And what I'm going to do is cut so if you guys see this, they're foam strips. And so I don't have to guess how long they need to be. What I kind of do is I'll just set it to where it needs to go. And then I'll grab my glue scissors. And then we're going to put one here as well and cut it. And then you've got some extra bits here. Hi, Stacy Burns. And then we're going to put one here. And I'm kind of going close to the opening because your designer paper is about just a hair bigger than the opening, okay? So let's grab and do this one. Get it to right there. I mean, you could like measure and then cut, but I feel like it's easier. And I'm actually gonna do two there. I think it's easier to cut as I'm placing it down and just hold up the end so it doesn't stick down to the paper. And then I'm also going to just leave that little guy right there. And then we'll need one more here. Sounded like beer here. Okay, so we're going to put one next to the window opening there. And one next to this one. And then we do one along the bottom. And then where there's a little bit of extra space on the sides, I'm going to fill that in as well. Okay. How many of you guys have these foam strips? <laughs> we used them a couple weeks ago when I did the monthly card making class because we did a shaker tag. And I'll put that guy right there. Hi, Carmen Melendez. Okay, so this guy's extra. I don't think we'll need him, so I'll slip him back in here. And so now 
Oh, maybe I should do one more right there, actually. I want one really close because, and I might just do right in the middle there. Okay, so this isn't like a shaker card where you have to be like meeting everything. Hi, Barb Mo Moynan. You don't have everything having to meet and be cohesive for like a shaker card. Well, what our goal is, is this piece of paper now will kind of like set right here. And then this one is going to set here. And then what we'll do is put liquid glue. So what we can do now, if you guys have, um, if you guys have the foam strips, this works great. Now, if you don't, you're gonna have to like cut and piece dimensionals, I think. And the other option is if you don't like foam adhesive, like popping your cards up, you'll have to figure out how to glue these strategically. <laughs> um, because the designer paper, I cut them in a way that I could maximize how many I got out of a sheet. Um, and so they're not much bigger than the space that's in the, the opening. Okay, so I'm gonna just hover over the top and I kind of am eyeballing left to right here. And this is gonna go over the top like that. Okay, hi Sandy, is he doing? And then this guy's gonna go, oh, I think I forgot that one. And then this one's gonna go, the closer you get to the, the window opening, the better, because then the paper is something to catch on to. And then this guy is gonna go right there. Okay, so now you've got your paper in the windows and you've got dimensionals everywhere, except for you don't need more dimensionals here. We're just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue here to help adhere that to our pale papaya, okay? So then flip that over. Yeah, <laughs> you guys, you gotta be careful. You don't have a lot of wiggle wiggle slide room with this. It's like uh, one and done and get it good, I guess, is how my advice for you. <laughs> I hover over the top until I get it where I think it needs to go and then I just go for it and shut your eyes and just put it down. <laughs> uh, we just really kind of got started, Sandy, actually. Um, so that's good. But yeah, watch the beginning part too. I got some updates. So what happens is the bottom is flat here where the designer paper is, and then you've got it popped up everywhere else where the white is. Okay, super cool. Now this can get adhered onto the card front, and then our inside can also get glued in to the card. So we'll do this one first. Now you've got little wiggle wiggle room to get this guy down good. And then we'll put this one on the inside. Now this is a card that just says hello. So I leave the insides blank for that because <clears throat> then I have a lot of space. I can write a love note if I want. Okay, so then we have this little guy here. So you're wondering how do you get him kind of tucked in here? So what I would do is that's where he's gonna go. Um, you could gently pull up your dimensional, which is what I'll do, but I put a sequin right on the corner here. So because I put a sequin there, I'm gonna put a little dot of liquid glue there because with vellum, you can see where you put glue behind. So you wanna be very sparingly. I might just put a little dot on my H here as well, just for a little bit. And then along the edge here as well. That little bit along the edge is kind of hidden behind the white here. And so this is gonna get tucked right in there. And because you've got that white frosty vellum, you generally just see the hello there. <clears throat> okay, but I will put a little um, iridescent sequin there. Okay, so this guy, how do we do this guy? We've got ribbon and the ribbon is actually a bow. So let's, and it's not really a bow, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it's not a true bow. It may look like a bow and it may talk like a bow, but it's not a bow. <laughs> Hi, Becky. Um, I said that joke the other night. I said, it, it, even though it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, I said, it might not be a duck. And Tyler looked at me and he's like, what are you talking about? It's a duck then. And I'm like, well, maybe not. <laughs> so I'm putting some tear and tape on the back. If you go over the edge, you can just um, flip that tape over. Okay, so I've got that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of looking how I've got it. So this goes like this. So I'm gonna put like this tail coming out this way and then I'm making a little loop, 
okay? And I'm catching the tear and tape on the back and I should have prepped myself a couple pieces here that I'm gonna put over. So I just, <clears throat> my tail's going out that way and then I've got a loopy loop and now I come across, so this is like this. And so now I come across the back I'm gonna make a little loopy loop and then it catches the tear and tape and I'm gonna bring it out and make another, have a little tail. Okay, so that's what the back looks like. So it kind of looks like a bow, but this is my how my head wraps around making it look like a bow without having to make a bow. <laughs> okay, and then you can trim your little tails. And so now you've got this ribbon that's attached, and this is going to kind of go right about here. So that's the basis for starting. Um, okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this flower, or this flower, the leaf up here. And it's gonna catch, I hope, some tear and tape. And it didn't. So I'm actually going to pick the tear and tape off of that and see if now it'll catch it. Something like that. All right, so that caught it. And then, so that's gonna go here. And then this other one is gonna come out on the bottom, kind of like that. So let's see if there's tear and tape. Oh, I should probably, I'll pick that off. And that'll help this guy stick down here. Okay. So that is gonna lay like this. Now, that guy, if you're happy with how far it sticks out, great. And if you're not, you can just bend it down and make it be a little bit shorter so that he's tucked in a little bit better. Okay, so that's a little shorter. And I'm gonna grab more tear and tape. And we're gonna adhere that. So that it's stuck, good, all right. This guy and the two leaves, I'm gonna kind of just let them sit for a second. So you've got this big gap here, and then this is raised. So my flower is gonna sit right about there. And so what I would recommend doing is grabbing a dimensional, or two, two of them probably. And you see there's a dimensional. I'm going to stick my flower, and that, you know what? These dimensionals are sh like not as high as the foam strips. So I'm actually gonna do a double stuff adhesive sandwich here. So like I got them too high there. And now my flower should stick to that really nicely. And it's gonna be more flush then, okay? So this guy back here is just kind of hanging loose. I'm gonna help him get some stability. So I'm gonna put a double stack of dimensionals behind that leaf. And then that'll hang out right there. So now he's not so floppy. This one, he's a little floppy there. If I want to, I would put one oh, little baby dimensional. Hang on. I got to cut because the leaf is a little smaller and I want it to kind of look like it's popped up. Okay. So that's going, hi, Jennifer Jones. So that's kind of popped up. Now these leaves, well, how do I want to do these leaves? I like to do mini glue dots. And so I have a hard time figuring out which end is which, so they look very similar, but I'm gonna put a glue dot on the end, and then that's gonna get, I'm gonna sneaker it in, in a good spot, like right here. Good. And then a glue dot. Okay, no problem, Jennifer. <laughs> um, and then this guy is gonna sneaker up here and hang out there. And then you've got some of this weird stuff. <laughs> Hi, Marsha Kulbert. And I'm gonna do a glue dot for that one as well. And I'm gonna put it at the end there. And where does that wanna go? Let's see, I think it looks good up here. So we're gonna sneak that right there. <laughs> okay, that's how I built that little flower ensemble right there. I kind of put the ribbon to the back of the flower and then added the big gold leaves, kind of adhered it just in the middle and then that allowed me to tuck in the last that I needed. And now if I really, really wanted to, <laughs> I could use up my extra leaves, like for you guys at home that have extra white paper. If you feel like you wanted another leaf, you could tuck another leaf in there. That is no problem. Um, it's, if you like more, you can add more. You've got white paper, you can use it. All right, so sequins. Let's see what I got here. These are iridescent -y sequins and they are so pretty. So I did say I had a little bit of a glue that I put down there. I'm gonna put three of them in the center of my flower. 
right here. Oh, I, I might run out of my little sequins. I'm not quite sure, but if I do, um, you guys have a whole sheet, right? So I used up a lot of them because I made four of each of these cards already. So, all right. So when you get those little sequins on, it just adds a little bit of bedazzly on the side here. I just, like, the flower is so pretty. I love making little arrangements like that. And we were trying to figure out how to add a sentiment on here. And the set is awesome because there's four sentiments. Hello, best wishes, thanks, and happy birthday. And so we featured a sentiment on each one of the cards. And so that was this guy. And then we've got our inside like that. I just, I love that. So, yeah, and it, uh, yours might look a little different depending on which uh, gold pieces you picked. <laughs> thanks, Barb. I, <laughs> I make beautiful cards look so easy. I mean it's yeah i guess i and that's what i get a lot it's like well never is that easy for me well you guys i've been doing it for for 20 years <laughs> so uh it's so funny that you're not the first one to say that to me barb and my goal for you guys is that eventually you know you can make you know cards easy it's just it's just knowing little tricks of the trade like this flower thing could probably really kill some people like not kill people but like it could really stress you out i should say like send you like cr go crazy like how do you get it but think about how to make like hopefully how you guys saw how I do it that's how I do a lot of flowers I attach stuff to the back of them and then put them down in class when I have in-person class I see a lot of people try to put the leaves down and get them glued to the card and then they try to put more stuff and then they put the flower on top and then it doesn't look right I start with the flower up in my hands and build the flower and then put the flower down so, okay, you guys, we got one done. Woohoo! Okay, let's keep her moving. All right, let's get that in there. All right, put that over there. Oh, I just, these cards, you guys, are breathtaking. And I'm going to show it to you one more time because, oh my goodness, so pretty. All right, we are going to do Pink Alicious next. So, yes, the, I, like, it's so fun doing these ink, paper, scissors cards because I can work with the same ribbon and the same embellishments. And because the expressions in ink and the FM pack, the paper and the, that had gold in it, it was so easy to figure out, oh, let's do gold with this. <clears throat> All right, so this guy's next, you guys. So grab your kits um, and let's start on that one. This one also has gold embossing on it. The best wishes is embossed in gold like that. To, to cut out so carissa said oh sandy doing to make the cutouts is the picture of this guy thanks carissa for answering i really appreciate that okay so let's see what we got going on you guys in your kits you'll have a piece of polished pink eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter okay so let's burnish our edges now this is a horizontal card so remember to move your card so that you stamp things correctly your little designer paper is a three by three, so you can get 16 of these out of a 12 by 12 sheet. You guys, in your kit, you'll have two white pieces that are the same size. They're both four by five and a quarter. One's for the inside and one's for the outside. And there is some stamping on them. So, on this, you can see, <laughs> we were practicing. That's a really dark pink. I think we ended up going with second strength. So, there's also a piece of polished pink. I think it's like three and three sixteenths by something, um, maybe four and a half, but, uh, this is one of your favorite sweets, Deborah. Oh, I love this one too. Okay. So this is going to fit on here. You'll need to grab some gold ribbon, but this is where one of the labels comes from. You guys, we originally started with it with a gold leaf and then we ended up switching it to white because it was too much gold. So then you have one of your labels from the picture, this die from the first set that got cut out. You guys will have this leaf piece. Um, you will need to grab your pick tool because I bet you any money there are some things that need to get popped out of here. Okay. So why don't you get your pokey tool, poke those. I'm going to poke mine as well. So this die is from this set right here. And so everybody who got the kit from me, you guys got yours already die cut. And it's, I used thick white paper so that it was a little bit more sturdy than just using a regular basic white. Okay, so let's get the little schnibbles out of the way. And, oh, and then they all went in my lap. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, man. Well, half of them went in my lap, but I got them and they're not. Okay, so here's the trick before I forget, you guys. There, you see that this is not the same size, right? You guys see that? It, it doesn't, it's not exactly the same. So, and there's an extra leaf here. So, if you're wondering what that is all about, what you're gonna have to do, and it might be hard, but you're gonna do it. You're gonna take and you're gonna snip this, okay? Right, so it is snipped. Where did we snip this, Chris? I think it's snipped, like right, I'm gonna just look at this. That is like that, and this one goes up here. And okay, it's right here. This gets snipped off, so this bottom piece is here. And then there's this top piece here. So you're gonna have to, you guys are gonna do surgery. It's okay. Get your scalpel out. So that guy goes there. And then this leaf is here. Okay. And then last but not least is this little dude. You gotta kind of trim him to make it look like it's all smooth on the bottom. And he's the one that gets tucked in there. So surgery is required for this card. So you've got your flower or your leaf set like that now. Okay. Let's get stamp happy. So you need to grab your two white pieces and your sentiment here, and we are gonna do our pink first. So part of the stamp set is this background that is so awesome. You guys, if you're ever looking to add texture to a back of a card and you have this set, this is perfect. It looks like snow, if you use it in blue, it looks like snow, like a blustery snowstorm. So cool. So this stamp right here is what you're gonna need and you're gonna need your polished pink ink. If you don't have polished pink and you have something similar, that will work too. So let's move these over to here, grab this, and you can see our little tag has it done to it as well. And let's go like this. And we have to do that before we do our embossing. So you guys are gonna definitely wanna stamp off because it's super dark, okay? And then when you go here, you're just creating a little background on this one, okay? And that is gonna be embossed with gold next. Now for this one, stamp off, and you're just stamping near the top. So stamp off. And if you wanna do a third strength and get a little bit more color at the top, you can. So now you're gonna flip it over and do the same thing along the other edge, okay? So that's how the pink got. I, sn I, I tricked a few people because a couple people asked me where was the paper for back here and it's you're actually creating your own. So now that you've got that for the outside, depending on what you wanna do on the inside, you could make it look exactly the same um, and you might make it maybe a little less thick. So you have a little more room to write if you want. And so you're gonna just do the top and the bottom. And so that creates that same effect, okay? So that's it for the polished pink, but we have to do our best wishes. This would be a beautiful um, wedding card. Uh, so I'm gonna clean that later. We're gonna grab best wishes and we're gonna stamp that. So you gotta be careful because you wanna make sure you do it a little closer to the right edge um, versus the middle because you have a, a leaf that comes up right there, okay? And again, you're using Versamark, and Versamark is that pigment pad, and you wanna be careful. This stamp has a little bit of forgiveness that it could look a little crooked and it still wouldn't look crooked, <laughs> so, but I am going closer to the right than I am to the left, okay? And give it a second for the ink to hit the paper without squishing and getting a halo, and then We'll go back to our embossing powder, open that up and sprinkle it on and you'll see where the best wishes. Tap it a little bit. Oh, see, I had a halo. You guys are not hardly gonna, you're not gonna see it, but if you get a halo, the powder is gonna stick to it. So you just have to make sure you get that off so that it doesn't heat up right there. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. And because I've got a little more wiggle room here, I'm not gonna use a clothespin. I'm gonna take my chances. Let's see if I can get you guys to see this again.
and there it goes. So I don't wave it around, I just trace it as I see it start to heat up, I just move it. And let's see, bring it down there, you can see I got it good, okay? All right, I think we're ready to assemble. So our two white pieces, nothing holding us back from doing those. Hi, Brenda Wood, how is my girl today? Um, are you ready for Christmas, Brenda? <laughs> I hope you get lots of good presents <laughs> and everybody for that matter. <laughs> all right. And you know what? It's not all about the presents. I hope you guys get to spend time with those that you love. That's what it's all about. So I take back my presents comment. <laughs> well, I don't. I hope you guys get everything that your heart's desired. There. How's that sound? Okay. There's that, and then this was our inside. I had done less of it, less of a border. So that's gonna go here and there. And then this one gets flipped over and glued onto our polished pink piece. And now you have a little bit more white on this side and less pattern. So that's what I put towards the inside because part of it gets covered up. Okay, and then, oh good, I'm glad that you're gonna get to spend some time with your family, that's awesome. Okay, tell Jeannie that she won the Mary Snowflakes bundle at half off if she wants it. <laughs> I uh, gotta reach out to her, I don't know if she caught that when I did the live, so. Um, I use your, you know, so Kathy said she uses her heat gun on the back of the paper, yep. I think that works too. I generally don't do that a lot. I guess I'm always uh, going from the top, but do, going from the bottom works perfectly well too. Um, so you're just gonna cut yourself some ribbon. Hi, Laura Sullivan. And this covers up the seam that you see for the edge of the designer paper. So you can just flip your tails down. And then I always grab a couple more pieces of tear and tape. And now I'm not gonna pick off the waxy paper um, this time. I'm gonna leave it as like single-sided tape, okay? And then this is gonna get popped up with dimensionals. And I'm gonna try to use the end of this. Cause you guys know I love, <laughs> I love cleaning up a sheet of dimensionals. It's so satisfying. And then we will grab this one. Okay, so there's nothing stopping us from putting this down on our card front. Hi, Kathy McIntyre. How are you doing, girl? It's hard to believe that it's Wednesday. I still haven't like grasped that it's Wednesday. Like this whole time I've been stamping with you guys, I felt like it was Thursday yet. <laughs> All right, so this is going on our card front here, like that. Now, I don't think I pulled out my hexagony piece from the Ephraim pack. So this, we gotta find it. And I think it's here. So if you guys go into your ephemeral pack, you're going to look for the six-sided shape here. And you're going to pull out the insides that you don't necessarily need. Like if you're a saver and you want to save these gold strips and use them for something, you are welcome to. But that's what I wanted to get out was that little guy right there. Also with these, if you have a purpose for them, you guys can use them. So this little guy here hooks like this. That's how he's on here. So once you get him situated where you want him, then you can flip it over. And I'm actually gonna get a piece of, oh, she's fabulous, that's awesome. So I'm gonna get a piece of tear and tape and I'm going to have that ready so that when I get it exactly where I want it, I'm just going to secure it down, okay? So I just taped the back of that. And so now that's on there like that. Now, our leaves. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna prep the back of this with some, some dimensionals here. Just maybe a few, because I wanna be able to wiggle things in as I need to. So I'm gonna pick those off. This is going to go right about here, but you've got this guy. And what's gonna happen is, as long as I left a little room, I'll be able to slide that up through there, okay? So 
Let's get him down here. You, I see. I only put a few dimensionals closer to the middle. So this goes right about here. Okay, and don't press really hard. Just leave it sit there. Now this guy, I'm going to take and put a little bit of liquid glue. Now, for those at home that are wanting to recreate these and you have the adhesive sheets, you're welcome to use them to make your dies into stickers. But if you don't, I'm just putting little bits of glue in random spots on here so that I can take this and it's going to like, that little stem is gonna weave up and it's something like that. Just give it a second to have the glue and let that hit there. Okay, this leaf right here goes on top. So it's this one. He's kind of tucked in here as well. And we also have the gold. Oh, you guys, I forgot the gold. Ah, you guys, hang on. We can make this work. Hang on. <laughs> We're going to pull this up for a second and not let it set. So should have some extra gold leaves in here. Let's grab this one here <laughs> the other card i had them sitting in there so um do to do, do this one. um let's take this one and so it's actually like that is up through there like that okay no <laughs> almost forgot but i didn't so that's how i got that little gold leaf in there and then what i like to do is because this leaf is kind of big to help it stay I'm just going to put a dimensional behind there. Oh, good, Jeannie, I'm glad. Okay, I'll make connections with you to figure that out. Maybe after Christmas is done, because I know everybody's really busy right now. So um, I've got it sitting here, no rush. Okay, so I added the two, the two little gold leaves here. Um, this little guy, let's see where he might look good. Oh, I think he'll look good right there. So anyways, this is just kind of piecing this together to put it how you want to see it. And so we're going to put that one there. There's another gold leaf up at the top there. And there's one of these guys here. And then there should be one gold leaf. Let's take this one. We're actually going to snip this off of here. Okay. So this one is going to tuck, come out like this. And, okay, so we're just kind of making it look like it extended. So you're going to grab your glue and put a little glue behind here. And that one's coming out something like that. And we could put the little gold one down. Make it look like he's kind of tucking out there. And then the last white one going to cover up this little stem there so you won't even know that was there and last but certainly not least yes Audrey I have some left you'll have to message me email me or Facebook message me or text me and I can help get it in your hands and this little guy goes right like that oh my god it came together so good <laughs> oh, that's how we do it <laughs> okay now, my bottom is a little different than it is on this one because I chose a different gold set. So you can kind of see that leaf, that gold had a little spriggy thing on the side, and then this one didn't. But it's really up to you. Um, if you wanted to add a little more, you can. So the other thing is, if you guys have a hard time with getting glue on your foil, I don't know if you can see it, but um, they make something called this. <laughs> Uh, adhesive remover. Um, if you get a little Q-tip and if you dip it in the top of that and just take the Q-tip, you can get the goo off of your foil. So I can do that in a little bit. Because I don't know, I should stick some Q-tips around here, but I don't know if I have one handy right now. Okay, but we're not done. We have to find where I put the little sequins. Hmm. I bet you guys can see them and I can't. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. They were just here. Oh, there they are. Perfect. Underneath. So grab your sequins. 
And I've got, so I'm going to be sparingly. I do, I do have one, two, three, four, five. I put five on this one, but I want to make sure I save enough for my other card. So I'm just going to do three on this one. I'll put it right there. So if you guys have extra sequins, you can put more, but I put one there, one there, and one up there. And they're hard to see, but they're a little bit in the light. You can catch them, but that's it for this guy. Isn't he beautiful? I should say uh, whatever it is, this beautiful card. So, all right, all right. We have two done now. So we will move this one. So these are the two we have done. Oh, they're so breathtaking. I love them. I love them so much. Okay. We're going to do the greenie next. Mean green. Incredible Hulk card. Okay. So. Had to pull in the painted textiles embossing folder. Painted textures, I think, is that one. So you guys can see that's what it looks like. It kind of matched the sushis of the paper. Okay. So that's in mint macaron. The die cut is also out of the thick white so that it's not as flimsy. It's a little more sturdy. So you can poke out anything that needs to get poked on them while you're at it. Okay, so then what else is in your kit? You have two little gold strips that will go at the bottom and the top of the designer paper. You have your little label that came from the picture this dies. So this one was the middle one here that got cut out where that one was from the bottom. The next card is the one from the top, or the top and bottom are interchangeable. Okay, the designer paper is a three by four, so you can get 12 of these, and everybody's looks a little different. So if you look at the paper, you can see that this one's a little lighter. This one has a little more darker, but they're all kind of with little swirlies of different hues of green and some gold. And then this is evening evergreen. I love me my evening evergreen. <laughs> Oh, it's so pretty. I, you know, just, I've never used green so much. And then all of a sudden this color comes along and I'm using so much of it. Hi, Pam. Okay, so let's see. What do we want to do first? All right. Let's, there's not much stamping on this. Oh, you guys, I don't even know if I cut myself a white inside. I will have to grab a white inside. Oh, I did the same thing on that one as I did on the other one. So let's see if I have a white mat. Oh, let me get a white mat real quick. Then I have it. All right, so. All right, so then we have our white mat. It's just four by five and a quarter. Um, okay, so now we're going to do evening evergreen for our ink sentiment color. Totally your favorite color of, oh my gosh, Feline, that's awesome. You know, I would have to say it's in my top five. <laughs> I, I definitely love my Highland Heather and early espresso and cherry cobbler. <laughs> All right, so thanks for sharing, Betty. I appreciate it. Okay, so there's our evening evergreen, and I think I'll move that there, move this here, and I have a scrap paper, I'm going to grab a new one, and we're going to practice. <laughs> so, I always like to practice to see how it stamps before I go and stamp on my, my sentiment label. That did pretty good, so we're going to just go for it, and just like cross our fingers. <laughs> But I stamped it straight and it's good. Yay. Okay, that's it for the evening evergreen. For mint macaron, we have the little flower. That little guy got used and it is in mint, but it's not at first strength because if you go at first strength, you can see how dark it is. And you know what? It's not this little guy, it's actually this set of three. This little set of three, but again, it's not at first strength. And it's like second, stamp off, second, stamp off, second, second. There you go. So we just created a little bit of background flower action on our sentiment strip. Okay, so our inside is the pale papaya. So we went back to the first cards inside and kind of cased that. So we've got our pale papaya in the bottom corner. And then our leaf this time, instead of doing pear pizzazz, I'm going to do the mint because the mint is what matches for this card. So remember what we did. I didn't ink up all the way to the edge. Let's see how dark that is. Mm, 
Mm, I think I'll go for it. So we're gonna do one over here, one up here, and one little guy sneaking out the bottom here. I'm good with that. <laughs> so remember what we did. If you miss hitting your flower, you could always fill in that little bit with a blender pen. Hi, Shannon Kemp. All right. You guys, that's it for the stamping here. Okay. So let's glue our inside in. And now for your foil strips, I'm pretty sure, you guys, I gave you three quarters of an inch by four. And... I think when it comes to gluing foil strips down, I I don't always like to use liquid glue because it's very smeary. So I think for you guys, I gave you three quarter inch, so it was a little easier. I think for me, I tried to use up my strips of gold so I didn't have to <laughs> cut more. So this is what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use tear and tape, and I'm gonna put it on the, the bottom edge this way and the other side. And then what I'm gonna do is hold this above it and I want about an eighth of an inch. Tear and tape is awesome because with foil, it just sticks right away. Or if you use liquid glue, it smears around <laughs> a lot. And so this actually adheres like instantaneously. And I'm gonna put it on this one because I didn't have a lot of room on here to put it. So start at the top. Make sure I'm straight. And then that's how I added my gold strips to my designer series paper. And then this gets popped up with dimensionals. They're always underneath something. <laughs> they get covered up so easily. All right, much easier, right, Julie? I definitely agree. So I'm at the point where it's time to use up some of these guys. And I'm gonna get one, let's just use that one there. Okay, this then, I put that on to the mint macaron mat. I think I got that. So it is, if you guys have your sentiment, this guy's gonna go something like here. And then this, it's about a half inch from the top. So we're gonna go like that side. The reason I'm gluing this down first is because if I'm a little bit too wide, I can take my scissors now using the mint as a guide and just trim off anything. You know, had I glued that mint down right away, I wouldn't have been able to do that, but I did trim off just a little hair, little hair. All right, this gets adhered to our front of our card and that goes here, like so. All right, you guys, you know what's on the bottom of this card? The lamb technique, okay? If you're new to the lamb technique, it's called, Kelly and I call it the lamb technique because her last name is Lamb. Um, <laughs> I'm sure this has been around for many, many a moon. And she just started doing it, I don't know, a year and a half ago. and. I had never really done it before she did it. And now that she showed me what to do, I'm like, oh, I love it. It's just another way to add ribbon. So it's tear and tape along the bottom. And I am a righty, right-handed. So I generally hold the paper with my left hand and I control the ribbon with my right hand. And I take the ribbon and have it stick to that tear and tape at the top and I work my way down. And you're just going to catch the ribbon. And I never really look at the back while I do it. I trust my fingers. And I'm only catching it just enough to hit the tear and tape. And then I'm just weaving it back and forth at a diagonal, making these little humps of ribbon here. So you can see there's the back of it again. I'm just going to show you. I am not bringing it way down here, right? You waste ribbon then. So... You can watch for the rest of it. I'm only gonna show you that I, I do it from watching the front because I only care what the front looks like. I don't really care what the back looks like. And I always try to end it with the ribbon, like making one little humpty hump over here. So then when you get it good at the end, you can cut your ribbon loose 
is the mint glitter popped on the base. Penny, I popped it up. Once you pop, you can't stop. It is popped up with dimension. Oh, there you can see it. There's a dimension. I put lots of dimensionals back there. Okay. Now the trick with this is you need to put tape over the top of this. Otherwise this could eventually work its way loose. We don't need loosey goosey ribbon. So grab your tear and tape and you're going to put it right over the top. Now this ribbon is thick. It's about the same thickness as a dimensional. So in that case, what I like to do is I like to just rip that off and then I add dimensionals along the top. And that tear and tape will help stick to the paper. So that's the back of that, you guys. Tear and tape, sandwich with my lamb technique ribbon. And then I've got dimensionals. And now that's what's gonna go along the bottom here. I kind of got it centered left to right and in the empty space of the mint macaron. And when you feel it, you can feel that it's pretty flush. That ribbon was about the same thickness as the dimensionals. So I would not put more dimensionals underneath the ribbon area because you're already at the same height. Like it's pretty, this, pretty close. All right. So flower power left here. So we got to get this flower on and we got to add some foliages. So <laughs> before I get happy with my flower, I'm going to find my foliages. So we could definitely use that guy. There is something over here. Maybe we'll, we'll use this one. And it's basically whatever you guys want to use. So that one, so there's one at the top here, or let's say this is the bottom one. We'll use that at the top. I'm hoping that there are, oh, nope, I want, inside the hexagons are those little ball things. Mm, let's see here. Let's grab this one. That could go up there. And then uh, I think I'm going to look for what else is in here. This is all hexagony stuff. I want one of those. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to take these out. And I'm mad that I took them out because they're going to be a pain in my butt to get them back in. So let's just see what I can find. There's one. That's the guy I wanted right there. So, oh, and then that came out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just going to pull him out, and then I think I'm going to leave this alone again. And I'll show you how I put this flower power together. So it's not all glued down, you guys. To put adhesive around all of this, we would want to be done, <laughs> like too much. So the thing is, though, you got to be able to sneak these little gold leaves in where they need to go. So let's see how our flower gets held here. Like, okay, round and round we go. So... I'm thinking that like this one is perfect. It could fit right there and that's gonna get snuck in there. So I'm generally not gonna put any glue right there. Um, this one I'm thinking is gonna get tucked from and come out from there. That leaf can come somewhere. So you can see I'm gonna be putting adhesive more towards the middle area and not near those sections. So how's it gonna work? If you guys wanna make more of these at home, I highly recommend your adhesive sheets, but for those that got the kits from me, you can definitely do it with a little bit of liquid glue. And I'm going to hit that middle of that flower. And I'm going to hit some of the, the rosy flower over here. If my glue comes out, and I'm going to put a little there, maybe a little here. Don't feel like you have to get the whole thing. So I'm going to try to not go right there, though. Okay. If we need to add more, we can. But that's generally where I'm thinking... And this needs to go something like this, okay? Then this guy we talked about, I, I'm gonna use liquid glue and put it right there. And then the other thing though, this would be cool. I love popping up just the leaf part of things. So I'm gonna just grab from over here. I'm gonna pop up that leaf right there. Okay. All right, Judy Bobo, we'll catch you later. So this is gonna come like that. And just be careful you don't go over the edge of the card. So we've got that little guy sneaking out like that. We got our leaf popped up. I'm gonna pop up this leaf as well. And this one here. And then put a little bit of adhesive near 
the base of this right there. And this is gonna go underneath over here. Okay, you guys doing okay? So far so good? This one, where should we sneak him? So I've got one little leaf over there, but because I didn't do a lot of glue here, that could go there, but the little stem is gonna be in the way. So we're gonna cut off the stem and I'm gonna pop up the leaves on this one too. So let's grab those little dimensionals and then I don't even know if we need to put adhesive at that base there because it'll be right underneath. And put this and you can kind of finagle the leaves so they go where you want them to. All right, this little doohiggy right here. We're gonna find a little spot. And you know what, we might not even because I have one here and I have one there and that might be just enough. I think that's enough. Yeah, that's enough, we don't need to use him. Because on mine, I have one here and one there. So it's just tucking in your goal. I don't know if you guys can see, you're tucking in the gold foliage around the edges. And I tried to make it so that you couldn't see it under, so it was hidden underneath the white pieces. All right, wow, it turned out so good. All right, so put this in here. And let's add some bling to it. Um, oh wait, let's see where our bling is. It's always nice to have a sample to look at. So we're gonna put that one there. Oh, the center of the flower. I definitely, I, I do clusters of three. So there's three sequins right in the middle. What card is left? Oh, I need six for this one. Oh, there's six left. Okay, I'm saving the rest of these guys for the last card, but this is what we got. <laughs> I added that little cluster to the middle here and then one down there. And that's how we got it. We got some mint and evening evergreen going on. All right, you guys, we got three done. Have you picked out a favorite yet? So far, this is what we got. <laughs> no, you might might like the, the last one the best. I think I, I don't know, they're all so pretty. They're all so stunning. So this is our last one and you guys, the belly band was a trick. It's always hard to mail belly bands. I will be completely honest with you. The belly bands have to get folded, but they aren't exactly like meant to get glued right away. So don't go gluing your belly band shut right away. So I wanna show you about that. So here's what's on the belly band. And then the card opens like this. Whoa, I need to get a sponge dauber. Okay, so <laughs> Carissa was all over this. Um, flower. <laughs> she figured out how to get this to go. So I'm going to try my best because oh, she did all of the ones for our samples, I think. <laughs> she was so good at it. All right. So you guys, this is um, the pink and green so far. Awesome, Wendy. So this is a 11 by four and a quarter and it's just scored at two and three quarters from each end. Okay. So I'm going to score or I'm going to fold the one side and burnish the edge. Now, when I do this side, I'm going to make sure that they meet right in the middle very good, like that, and not overlapping. And then they don't overlap and they meet good in the middle. So we've got two pieces of polished pink that are mats for here and here. And we have two designer papers for the mats that go right over the top of each of those. So you guys should have those in your kit. Let's glue this down. There's no reason why we can't glue this right away and have less pieces floating around to get lost. So one of those is, and you notice that there's nothing really on the back side of this one. <laughs> it's so pretty on this side, but it's kind of a dead area. Um, it's got a pattern through the middle, but then it's white on um, half of it, it seems. Okay, so that one goes here. And then this one goes on here, the gold is so pretty. Diane and I worked on some cards for Let's Just Stamp. I don't think I have them down here, but we used the gold and the white, it's so pretty. Now flip that over, and we're gonna glue those right to the top panels here, these bottom and top panels of our base. It's all about the base, no trouble. Okay, so let's put, I'm gonna go like that. So it's thick white on the bottom, thick basic white. Okay, and then this one's for the top. All right, we just put our pieces together. So when I do a thick white or thick vanilla 
base. I generally just stamp right on the inside. So that's where we'll do some stamping on that one. Your belly band was like nine inches. I have it scored, um, but don't necessarily go by the score lines. I, I had to score it so that it could fit in your kits to go. But what you're generally gonna do with this is on one of the score lines, it'll work. Um, your back is um, no seam. The seam will come into the front because you won't see it. So you can see here, there's no seam back there. Um, so when you bring this around one side, you don't want to do it too tight because it's hard. Um, Laura, sweet, you missed these. I do have le some left. You're going to have to email me, Chris M. Bertram at msn.com or, or text message me. I have a, just a handful left. Um, so you're going to roll this around. And then you guys, your score line, for those that got kits for me, your score line is going to be right at the mark of where the card ends there. So you're just going to have to take it and work with it and kind of flip it over and have it meet in the middle. And you want this to be loose enough so that it, it can slide up and down. Okay, if you have it so tight, you're gonna have the hardest time getting it um, on and off your card. Okay, so that's, all right, let's put this back on and we're gonna, let's go for it, as long as we're working on it. Um, you could use tear and tape or you could use liquid glue. Either one is gonna be very permanent in nature. So I'm gonna go with the liquid glue and then I'm just gonna hold it for a second. Or if you use tear and tape, so I kind of like left it rolled so that it's got a little wiggle room. Okay, so that's our belly band. Remember you guys, seam in the front, not the back. Otherwise you'll see it. This way we're gonna cover up our seam. Okay, then you can see there's ribbon and the ribbon is wrapped around as well. You guys, you know what I'm doing? I'm, I'm procrastinating and I'm sure Carissa figured this out. I am procrastinating <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> All right, tear and tape in the middle here. And pick that off and grab your ribbon. And the ribbon, seam in the middle, front guys, okay? So wrap this around like this. And it meets right there. And then you can cut it. Now what I would do is I would put a little bit more tear and tape right over that just to help secure it. And we'll leave it sit like that. I'm not sure if I'm going to take it off quite yet. Okay, we will need the ribbon for in a little bit. Um, we also need our hexagon. And that hexagon was the outside of the one that we just used. So that should be right here. We also need more gold leaves and foliages. So let's find where I put that little dude. Um, there it is. Okay, so we're going to use him. And we're gonna use this one right here on that side. And then on the other side, let's just grab this thing right here. So there's no rhyme or reason, you guys. If you pick a different one than I picked, it's really okay. No one will ever know the difference. But I tried to grab a leaf with the little, little ball thing on the side. Okay, so this hexagon thing has this strip in the middle that needs to get pulled out. Okay, so that's let's set that aside. And then you've got that stuff. And you have, uh, oh, this ornate frame is from the Ornate Layers dies. You will definitely have to do a little pokey, pokey, pokey on this. So <laughs> my die is crazy. It's not like the best. Uh, it's gotten a lot of love, I think. And so, I should have done this ahead of time because there is a lot with this one. So, you, know, you guys, one of the tricks that um, I do when I poke, <laughs> it does hurt a little bit from time to time, but I put my, <laughs> I don't know why I do it, but I don't know if you remember get pricked by a needle to get like a blood sample. I put that, the, the middle finger right behind, and as I'm poking, it hits my thumb and it provides enough pressure that if you just poke, it stays stuck to the back of it. Where if you poke it into something, that like your finger, just don't hurt yourself, then it comes out a lot easier. Okay, so we got all those, we got those. It must have been this top and the bottom that it didn't like. So I'm catching them on my finger here as I'm poking. And just don't poke too hard that you draw blood or hurt yourself, I guess is my piece of advice there. I don't want anybody to uh, have pain inflicted on there. Wear a thimble too. There you go, Jody Boo Boo. Jody Boo Boo. Oh my God, Jody Bobo <laughs> says to wear a thimble, you guys. Um, that would be the cat's meow. Exactly. So a thimble or like you guys, when you work at the bank, um, they have those little rubber grippy things that you wear to count money, 
right? That could be something that you wear too. Uh, this, I can tell that it didn't cut exactly so good. So diabetic testing, um, yeah. Or like when you go to go for a job, where was, I don't remember. Oh, I did for when I worked at Mercury, they did like a health thing where you got bonus points and whatever to, to get free stuff if you had like good cholesterol and that kind of stuff. So I remember having to go in and get that testing done and they just take a little, I hate it. I hate needles. <laughs> I really do. Not fun. So you, I think that's part of the reasons why I probably never had kids is because I was afraid of all the needles that would get put into me for uh, all the stuff that you have to go through when you have a baby. <laughs> I'm not good with pain, you guys. I like to stamp. Just that makes me happy. I don't like pain inflicted on me. All right. So picky, picky done. All right. So that is eventually going to go right here. We do have to stamp the sentiment. This is from the other label. We were going we to make two flowers and one leaf. And I'm going to show you how to do this, you guys. Oh, it's two-tone and it's fun. And we need a sponge dauber, which is right here. And we need pale papaya and we need the polished pink for our colors. We use the little dots here and then we use that big flower here. So that's good. We have that set aside. You guys should have your piece of white where you already did these stamping. So we're going to do the rest over here. And let's see here. What do we got going on? So... First things first, let's grab our thanks and polished pink and pale papaya. And that polished pink is gonna get stamped right on our label. So let's grab this real quick and just see how it stamps. I like to test it. Oh, wow, that looks good. Okay, so that's gonna go here, right in the middle of our label. Okay, so for these flowers, you guys, this is the flower. And you're like, Ooh, how do you get that color on there? So the trickery for this is to ink it up in one color and then you add the pink around the edges with a sponge dauber. So Carissa did it so perfectly <laughs> when we were crafting together. So you're gonna start with the pale papaya and then you take a sponge dauber with the Carmen says this is her favorite. Yeah, I saved this one for last too because it's my favorite. So sponge dauber gets pink on it, right? So you got a sponge dauber around the edge. And you got it might take a little practice before you get it exactly how you want it. And I'm not afraid of picking up orange ink and going into my pink because my pink is a lot darker than my orange. And what I'm doing is just putting the pink around the edge and not all the way in the middle. I'm just going as, I don't know, you guys are seeing what I'm doing. I'm just putting it around the edges, okay? And now we're just going to take our chances and see what it looks like, <laughs> okay? Like shut your eyes and stamp, okay? Okay, give it one, two, three, four, five, six seconds and let's see what it looks like. Are you guys worried? I might, I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> oh, don't be worried, look at that. Okay, that's good, I like it. Now, I advise do not go straight to your pale papaya because you have the residence, residence, the residue or remnants of polished pink on here, and that will go into your pale papaya. So I highly recommend cleaning in between stamping in this case. All right. And now you're going to do it again. Pale papaya first. Like you did with the peach. Yes, Julie, exactly. I, did we use these? No, what did we use for the peach? Oh, we used Calypso Coral. Coral. All right, so back at it, you guys. I'm gonna sponge dauber the edges of your flower with the polished pink, leaving the inner area with the pale papaya. All right, you can kind of see. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can see it in person. The inner area looks peach and the outer area looks like pink. All right, shut your eyes and go for it again. So that's it for the polished. Oh, no, it's not. We have a flower on the inside. What flower do we have on the inside? 
Oh man, we have another one. <laughs> okay, so we're not quite done yet. Okay, let's see what it looks like, guys. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, perfect, like flower. Okay, stamp off, let's clean this. And now we're gonna go on the inside and do the same thing. So third time will be our charm. Clean it good. Now for the inside, you guys, so we have to be careful because we don't want to hit the bottom area here. So I am going to just lightly mask this area with tape. And we're going to put this one on the side here. And we're going to go for our pale papaya. Ink up with our dauber on the side here. And we're going to go for it again. So I noticed that my pads down here in the hive are somewhat juicier than mine up in my crafting design room area upstairs. So it's harder to do this and make it look so sharp if your pads are dried out. So I'm, that's one note I'm making. So this is in the bottom corner over here. You saw I kind of have a piece of paper over there and a mask over here. So because if you look at the inside here, I have it that it's like in the bottom corner like that. Now, I, it's gonna be weird stamping it over the hump over there, so I masked it off. Okay, oh, nice, score, got that one good. Oh, we're not done with peach, we're done with the polished pink. Okay, so then when you're done with the dauber, you can always clean it out, and we have this, this little guy here. That stamp had mint on it, if I'm not mistaken. So we're gonna clean this one. And our peach is pretty dark, I think. So we're gonna stamp off. Oh, it's not so dark. Hmm. I'm gonna do it at full strength. And I got one down here. I got one up there. And now we're done with the peachy, peachy peachy. Pear pizzazz is the other thing. There's these little dots. And there's only four of them. And they're dark. So I'm gonna stamp off each time, and there I did even a second, third strength, and then I'm gonna do second, third, fourth. Okay, so, oh, let's do one more over there. So, all I did was put little dots to create a little background, and that's it for the dots, but we're not done done. Over here, we also have some leaves going on and the leaf there. So on this last section over here, we need to stamp some leaves and I'm pretty sure that this is really dark. So we're gonna do a second strength. Ah, uh, hmm. If you have room and you'd like to, you could do and <laughs> both of them and then you could add both or just choose which one you like. Okay, so that's how you guys are gonna fill up your ha, your quarter sheet. Two flowers, that was for the first card, and then this is for, the, for this card we're working on now. Now you could have gone and die cut or you could fussy cut that. All right, so by the magic of TV, I've got my two flowers cut and my leaf set, but I have this little section here to do yet. Oh, so we're not done with this. And there is the same concept as I, you don't want that stem in there weird. And I kind of like it that they're tucked behind. So, only gonna ink up to like right about there. We're gonna take our chances and see what happens. And it's gonna go, let's move this tape. But we're gonna leave the mask on the bottom here in case we go over. We shouldn't though. Oh, let's see what happens. We'll leave that right there. This is gonna get tucked up right there. Okay, and then do the same thing over here. I'm just gonna do a couple leaves there and one up here. Okay, so by taking and not putting ink on that little tip part, it doesn't look weird to me then. And then there, if you get a little close to your, the edge there, you can always take your blender pen and get the ink and color that little bit in just to, bring it down to the edge. So that's our inside. That's what we got going on. All right. I think, I think, I think we have the stamping done. 
All right, so let's put that there. This is garbage. Let's put our belly band back on and we can assemble this. Oh, I'm glad you like that, Jean. Okay, so this slides right back down and we have two flower powers, the leaf, this, and then this. So, okay, the tag here. There is some extra ribbon on here and I did that little technique that we did on the flower earlier. So I'm gonna take and have two pieces handy for me here and peel these off. And we're gonna do the same thing we just did, except for we're not gonna run it along the back. So we're gonna take this one, have a tail, and then we make a little loop-de-loop -loop like that. But I'm gonna cut it this time so we're not wasting any ribbon along the back. So just cut that off right there. And now the tail is on the left side again. So that, and then our little loop-de-loop. -loop. Tape handy. Bye, Kathy Groves, we'll catch you later. And then this one is, okay, so that's kind of what we got. This little ornate layers is going to need to get adhered and so it depends, you guys, it's gonna to start to get thick. And so I'm pretty sure this got taped down with just tear and tape. So I'm gonna take that off and, because our flowers are popped up. So I'm gonna run tear and tape here, there you are, and here. And then our ornate label is going to get attached to that. Now, make sure that this is centered really good if you need to get a ruler, you can get a ruler, but now you're just gonna set this over the top and it's gonna catch the belly band, right? So now that is attached to our belly band. Okay, so I wanted to show you. Make sure you're good and centered. Okay, our, our flowers go down next. So figure out how you want them to look. So one's going up here. I think I got that little hook thing up there like that, and then this one is like this. So that's about how they're gonna go. And what I wanted to do is I popped up the outsides and then I glued the um, more inside area flat. <clears throat> so we're gonna put a dimensional here and here, okay? And then I'm just gonna put a little liquid glue there, right in the middle area, okay? So, just a reminder, you guys, if you're not keeping up with me, I don't expect anybody to. I work at a different speed than most people, but I never want anybody to get discouraged because that's why we have a replay. So I, I, what people have told me their advice is to watch along and watch me make cards. And then when you have your kits, you can ask questions along the way and you can always refer back to the PDF tutorial or you can always watch the video again. The video is saved forever in the Facebook, my Facebook page. So you guys don't, you know, I, do, I cruise through cards pretty fast. I sure do. So what I just realized is I put a dimensional right where I think my leaf is going to go. So I'm going to move it to keep a little open area there. So this is going to go like that. Now, don't worry, you guys. I put my flowers down, but I didn't forget about my leaves. So I, you know, I left, you know, I left them because now the label needs to go. Okay, so this little guy is gonna go right here. So I'm trying to get the peaks to line up here. Okay, so this is gonna go here. Just set it right down. Um, and then you've got this piece is gonna end up going right over the top. And then we're gonna tuck our foliage and our leaves in. So don't worry. There's a reason why I didn't do them yet because I don't know exactly where they need to go yet. But this one's gonna need dimensionals. So we're gonna pop a few of these on here and one more in the middle. And I think I'm also going to peel off this tear and tape because there, that ribbon is a little bulky on the sides. And so I think by peeling that off, it's gonna help give it to stick to that gold Hexagon anything? Okay, so you've got this ready. You've got this sitting here. So all you're gonna do now is set this over the top. You guys, you can't like 
mess it up. Otherwise, you're, you're going to have a hard time because you're going to rip it off. So just trust yourself. I always tell you, be patient with it. Hover over the top until you get it where you think you want it. Like you can even hold it like this. Get it where you want it. And then just trust yourself and set it down and just go with it. Okay? So that we're going to go. And now this is secure. I didn't have to put any glue on that because it's so thin. You're going to get glue all over by trying to glue that. I just messed up my inside. Looks like I'm putting in another piece of cards. Like That works, Penny. You can definitely do that. Hi, Gwen. Okay. So far, so good. We got to get our leaves in here now, though. So this, I want to pop up with some dimensionals. So what do I have left here? We're going to go over here and grab from here and put them here. And I'm not going to worry about putting adhesive near the tip there because this is going to get tucked underneath here. So just gently lift this up. Oh, perfect. See that just kind of tucked right in there and it's glued. These guys. So I left a little opening here and I left a little space here. So same thing. I think we're going to use dimensional behind the leaves here. So put a dimensional. Let's see. Before I do that, I want to make sure that. So this is going to go right here. Perfect. I wanted to make sure my leaves weren't going to be hanging over the edge. So I'm not going to worry about adhesive either because this is just going to lift up. You might need to trim this tail off. When you trim that off, that's going to get set. Oh, I love it. Set right there. This little guy. Whew. Um, liquid glue or a glue dot? That can go here. So the good thing about the inside, um, Penny, is that that's exactly what you said. You can just cut another mat and put it right over the top of it. So we're going to sneak this guy right there. Okay. Perfect. And then lastly, this one over here, I'm going to figure out where he's got to go. And I think right there. So what I might do on this one is I'm going to use a glue dot. And I'm going to put it right at the, the end here. And I'm going to try to lift this up and sneak this in here. Just like that. Okay. And you can't put any dimensionals here because it can't attach to the card. Uh, all right. I think we got it. Now, if you guys have more gold foliage, like you could even put another gold thing coming out right there. Oh, actually, that guy came off. I was just thinking he might look good up here. Let's just see. Oh, my thing isn't glued. We, we're going to fix that. I thought I caught it with um, the tear and tape, but I didn't. This, I think I want to get this. Let's see. It just depends on where I put my dimensional. And if I put that dimensional right there. There. Okay. Trim our tails on the side here. So I like to go at the angle. And this one, we're gonna go at the angle. And I like that guy better up there. He looks good. So I have to get my goo gone. Now this thing, it, if that is kind of wiggling on you, like let's say here it is, what you can do to take care of business is take a glue dot and Actually, you could put that right in the corner there. And that'll help hold that guy in place. And then there. Okay. Now it's not moving. Okay, it needed some extra stability. Perfect. Okay. Cool beans and bagels. So I got a little glue here so I can grab my Q-tip. You guys, can, I think you can see that. Like I can get my Q-tip and get the goo off of there. And then this slides up and down. Nothing's attached to it. So nice. Okay. And then if you got, look, you got your inside. And then for this guy, you start at the top. You just got to be careful to catch this corner just right. Otherwise you don't. And there's that. And now I saved some of these little rind things here. Um, thanks guys. You like them. Yay. Okay. I put three of these in the center of each of the flowers. They just make the pale papaya and the polished pink pop so nicely. So we're gonna put that there. 
And then I had one over on the side here, right there, and then one left, and then I used up a sheet. I'm actually gonna pick this up and put it right there. Okay, squish them down good so they don't wanna pop off on you. Oh, it's a masterpiece, you guys. It's like masterpiece theater here. <laughs> Look at that one. So much. This is like a 10 pound card. It is pretty thick and heavy. Like if you weigh this, it's probably like 1.2 <laughs> on the Richter scale. <laughs> it's thick. Um, the other thing too is this is the card that you give to that precious person in your life. <laughs> so we made it through you guys. Wow. I was looking forward to this class a lot just because I could not wait to make these with you. So we started off with this one because it had the picture perfect die and we used all the labels on all four of these cards. Isn't that cool? So now the question is, I know you guys, um, and I think Laura checked out, but she said she liked the green one. Um, so pretty, I guess. <sighs> I don't know. I just, I couldn't even pick just one. Like this one, like I saved it for last because I knew there was so much that went into it and I was hesitating in doing the sponge daubering, but the ink pad did me good tonight and they were very nice. So the first is your favorite. Yes, yep, that one's good. Brenda likes all of them. Jean says the first one. Penny says her daughter's birthday the first is she's getting that one perfect okay Donna likes the hello and Carla says they're amazing I love it oh the first and last so this one and the, yeah I think that those are so pretty so pretty so you guys we did it you can tell my cheeks got red I did a lot of hot air coming out of my head tonight I don't think I took a drink so I need some water to stay hydrated Whew, okay so I know that um, I think I think a couple of you reached out about the kits, and so I if if anybody's watching the replay, um, just message me. Don't post in the comments that you're looking for it or interested in them. Make sure you reach out to me so I get your text message, your um, phone call, or your email, or your Facebook message. Either way, just get a get a hold of me. Um, I can help get it in your hands. Um, we are going to do the door prize drawing to see who. Um, from the 33 that had signed up before we started, um, we're gonna do the drawing for them. And I don't know if anybody has questions. You guys didn't generally ask a lot of questions throughout class. Um, if you're watching the replay and working on the cards, uh, my happy mail, Mitzi's asking, you guys, I'm gonna do a separate Facebook Live because we're already at two hours and I have a lot of prepping to do yet for um, some people are helping me out with the escape and they're picking stuff up tomorrow. So I do have all of this, right? You, oh, Audrey, you want the kit. So Audrey, I'll add your name to it. So I wasn't sure if you wanted to or not. So we'll put 34 for Audrey. Laura, if you're still watching, Laura Sweet, if you're still watching and you tell me you want the one of my kits, tell me right now and I'll add you as number 35. So you guys, I have, these are my card kits that I, I meant, I got to do a drawing for these yet, but I got all of this happy email, you guys. Look at all these cards. So, ah, oh, Cheryl, I got your card right here. So I, um, even this one from Shauna, you guys, it's the bright yellow one. I plan to do, um, what I'll do is, I don't know if it'll be before Christmas or maybe it won't be between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because I will be away from home. Uh, not advertising that I'm away from my house, but I won't be home. So hopefully nobody comes over and like wants anything. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try to sneak on for like 30 minutes tomorrow and otherwise it'll be Monday. Um, and I want to go through all the cards that I got so far that are sitting here um, just to show you guys all the happy mail that I got. So um, I, I think we're at two hours. I'm going to do a little drawing and then we'll We'll call it a night. <laughs> I, I think I have about four hours of cutting paper ahead of me. So I'm going to try to to keep keep myself going. <laughs> so, um, and then I'll have the drawing. I have the, the Mary Snowflakes. I got to figure out, you guys, the video is not in the Facebook page. So I have to re-upload the video, I think. I just discovered that today. So I don't know if I don't have a video with comments. I'm going to have to be strategic or creative, I should say, on how I figure out who the winners of those cards are. So maybe I'll... I'll figure out something. So 
Um, thank you, Mitzi. You have, you guys all, I hope you have a wonderful holiday as well. If I don't get on tomorrow and it's Monday, um, I hope you guys all have a great Christmas holiday season. Uh, and then we roll right <laughs> into the new year. Penny is still poking out the die. That is hilarious, Penny. Poke, poke, poke is what I say. So, um, yeah, the poking is tedious. I know there are people out there that love to poke. Bonnie Lesperance is one of them. So when I have her help me do die cutting, she likes to poke out the pieces and I tell her she doesn't have to, but she likes to so um yeah did I forget anything else besides doing the drawing I was giving Laura a second or two to see if she's still watching um if she was still watching I, I'll add her name and if she wasn't I'm going to go forward without her but that's okay um Merry Christmas to you and yours Bonnie as well um thanks Dar you have a nice Christmas as well all right so let's put my phone down here and get to, oh, you guys, mystery card night. So if you have until Sunday night at midnight, midnight central time to post your mystery card. I think there's not many out there right now. So um, I'll show everybody really quick how to do that because I know somebody was, a couple people were asking about where to post them. So I will flip my camera down and show you really quick because when I finished the live on Monday night, uh, I, it wasn't out there yet. So I wanna show you guys where that is. So. All right, when you're in Facebook and you go to Cars by Christine, you go to the events section, so under events. And because Mystery Night was last, this past Monday, you need to go to, so this is upcoming events, and then down further are past events. Okay, so we have to go to Mystery Card Night. And what you have to do is scroll down and you'll see where it says the word discussion. And under discussion is where we say, we hope you had a great time solving the mystery. And you just click on comments. And you can see like Mary Lou put a card out there already. Laura Johnson's got her card. Kimberly and Deb. I love them. They're so pretty, you guys. And so you can put your cards out there just by commenting. And then you can either attach a picture or you can take a picture right from here. So you can do either one, I think. So there's the camera or that. So that's where you guys don't need to share your cards. Kelly's going to do the drawing on that on Monday night with Paper Pumpkin. So let's go back here to Random Number Generator. And we need to pull that up. And we have 35 people. All right. Oh, Wendy, Merry Christmas to you too. Judy Bobo, Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. For, oh, you got my Christmas card. Glad you got it. Okay, random number generator. Um, okay, so we have here 34 people. So I'm going to hit this and click generate. Number 20. Let's see what number 20 is. Oh, Karen Wettstein. Woohoo! You are the lucky winner. You are lucky. I feel like I you just won something too not too long ago. Um, yeah, that's not your first time. <laughs> so, so Karen, I will have a prize for you. I know you're going to be coming to the winter creative escape in a couple weeks. So you can pick up your prize then. Merry Christmas to you too, Feline. Okay. So did we do it? We got through it. We made it through our last Facebook live before Christmas, but are not our last one because we got paper pumpkin on Monday. And then you guys, I am going to go live, not next Thursday, like at six, because it's New Year's Eve-ish. It's the 30th. I'll be out of town, but I'm going to post a replay. But we don't leave till Thursday because uh, Tyler's going to work Thursday during the day. And I'm off on Thursday, so I'm going to sneak on on Thursday and make a couple cards with you from my winter bingo. So so I've got a surprise. I don't know when it'll be, but I will be going live th sometime during the day on Thursday. And I wonder if I can incorporate that into a technique so that Kelly doesn't have to do a technique next week. I not, I need to talk to her about that. So, okay. Yes, lucky Karen. <laughs> so congratulations, Karen. Merry Christmas to you too, Barb. Okay. Anything else, you guys, or do we have it all? I think that we might have it all. And there you guys see I wore my, per my Packer shirt tonight. I don't know if you caught that. Look at that. Green Bay Packers. I don't generally wear Packer shirts <laughs> unless I'm at home lounging around. So and that was today, working and lounging. So, all right, you guys, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. And at some point, if I can sneak on tomorrow, I will. Otherwise, it'll be Monday. Um, sometime, maybe in my lunch hour, I'll pop up and do those cards. So lots of love and sunshine and hugs to you guys and make sure you stay healthy over the holidays get that vitamin d and c and zinc in you <laughs> to help you stay healthy okay guys all right love you bye